What's going on? What's going on? Entertain the geeky. So <laughs> it, it's so funny. Like we we took a break around the holidays, yeah. um, and like we just got off of a, a two week unintentional break just because there was like illness and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And, and now it's like children were sick and I was sick. Yeah, and it, it was no good. It's so cool to get back into the fold. So like I did a yeah. uh, I did a post on our Instagram the other day, and I was like, hey, sorry, Jason and I talked. You're getting two fucking episodes this week. So we're sure. going to make up for some lost time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the bonus content that we've been doing has been fun as hell to edit. <laughs> really? It, well, it is because like, I'll, I'll get the episode done. Right. And then I'll like, I'll have this section that's like, I know is the bonus content. Yeah. And part of it is typically kind of unusable just because it's like, we just finished an episode. There's like a, a brief second where we might not have our mojo yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and then we get it. And it's like, shit, dude, that could have been its own fucking episode with how it was going. Yeah, for And it's sure. just so funny. It reminds me of uh, when Entertain the Geeky first started and we were doing like these two and three hour episodes. Yeah, where you just, where you guys were just riffing. Oh, the whole time. It was <laughs> god awful. Yeah. We had like this plan to go into I think it was awful, it. but I think it's a lot. <laughs> it it's was, a lot to listen to. As a listener... <laughs> It's fucking it's not hard. awful, but it was well, a editing lot. it's a nightmare. Oh, I'm sure. And yeah. like, I didn't. I was like, okay, and post done. <laughs> when it's uh, like looking at uh, the equipment that we were using at the time. Oh yeah. So you're in a, a room with. I still have that old Yeti microphone. Well, it works. It, it does. It's there, a good there's microphone. A, there's a there's an account that I follow, and they shit on Blue Yetis all the time. And I'm like, man, I wouldn't be in the space at all. If no, it weren't yeah, for that was, fucking microphone. It was it a does, good microphone. It does just fine. Yeah. Uh and I'm like, if you're if you're just getting started and that's what you have the option of using, fucking use it. Well yeah, and it has that uh it has that three sixty listening thing where well, you can put it straight up and you can have people sitting around it and like talking at it. And, well, and that's and exactly what we did. Like yeah. it got the job done. The only issue with it is our room had zero sound treating. So oh, sure. we had tons of echo. It sounded like ass a lot of the time, <laughs> but it's like, we, 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 you're still learning, you know? So yeah. it was fun. But, uh, so Ant-Man Quantumania. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Oh yes. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Thank you. You got to add the Wasp. In there. I you do have to add the Wasp. Sexist asshole. I'm the worst. <laughs> so actually I do want to comment on her character. So when, when we figured out that she was going to be the Wasp early on in yeah. the, uh, in, early on in Ant-Man's introduction to the MCU. Yeah. The first Ant-Man movie. I was like, man. That lady is so beautiful and awesome. I hope she becomes a mainstay. Like, uh, almost like Romanoff showed up in Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you're like, man, I hope she gets to stay because she's a badass. Yeah. So seeing Wasp in this movie come in and just shit on stuff, it was so cool. But I, I liked it. I, I liked her in the movie. I feel like they didn't give her enough to do. And I get that, right? The, the, the impetus of the plot centers around Cassie and Scott, yeah. right? Because Cassie's growing up, she's kind of coming into her own and she's curious. And so it kind of centers on that. But I feel like in that regard, we had to sideline the other characters a little more. The other title character. Yeah. Well, I mean, Wasp, but also, you know, Janet and Hank, I think got a little sidelined Dude, as a result of it too. I, we'll, we'll get into Hank because <laughs> some of the shit that happened there with him was he did some stuff that it was just like so blah. And then some of the yeah. other things that happened with Hank, I was just like, fuck, that was amazing. Oh, yeah. Michael Douglas is great. Like, oh, he's incredible. He's definitely great. <laughs> well, uh, what, <coughs> God damn it. Um, what, what is the actress name that uh, plays his wife? Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer, thank you. I, one, I don't know if there's a woman that has aged more gracefully than her. Yeah. Uh, and I was telling Tara, because we had just finished the movie, it was like we were waiting for a uh, post credit scene. Sure. And I was like, I was like, Michelle Pfeiffer is a fucking crazy character in this. <laughs> and she's like, yes, she's like, you think so? I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, she's almost a fucking bad guy. Yeah. I mean, so she's cool. definitely tied into the central plot of the quantum realm. Oh, very sure. well. And caring well. and everything. But uh, here we can start at the beginning. So. We'll, we'll go to the very start of the movie here. All right. Well, we're going to spoil the movie. So if you haven't seen the movie out there, just don't don't even go listen away. To 
and come back later <laughs> after you've seen yeah, the movie. Come back for the next episode that we do. Yes. Because this isn't the one for you. But yes. it's, it's been out for two weeks, so I feel like we're safe. Yeah. Two or three weeks. I mean, at this point, everybody has talked about it. We're, right. we're late to the party. We are. <laughs> I actually, so I had years ago, I had somebody that was like, hey, I can get you guys press passes for these things so you can watch the pre-screenings. I guess I need to like, that would be cool. Check that out again, so we well, yeah, because then we could that. record ahead of time, and you exactly. could post it like the the, the day, day after the movie or the yes. day of the movie. Yeah, when it's all hyped and everyone in, so it's on everyone's mind. I, I think I'll I'll look into that again. But, uh, <laughs> so, movie starts and it's Scott Lang walking, being being him. It's just Paul Rudd. He's a national treasure. He, damn it, if he isn't, dude. he's a national treasure. I say that all the time. He is, man. Like America's, <laughs> I love that guy. America's sweetheart right there. Yeah. <laughs> so he's just walking, and there's this great monologue where you find out it's his book that he wrote. Yeah. And <laughs> so when when you're him, like him in particular, Scott Lang, and you didn't plan on being a hero. You right. were really just trying to get by the best that you could, trying yeah, to I mean, turn he's, your he's life a around. Thief in the first movie. Right. <laughs> But he, I mean, all he's tried to do is turn his life around and start anew. He's working at Baskin Robbins and shit. So I think that was more. Oh yeah, the first movie he's working at Baskin Robbins. Yes. I think the, the return to Baskin Robbins. I didn't really understand that scene at all. Like I was like, you fired him. Why is he? Well, just because he's a superhero? A hundred percent. That's that, gonna, that was the irony in it, right? Like I was like, why? Why are we doing this? What is the point of this? <laughs> I did like that moment in the first movie though, where where they fire him and he's he's talking to the guy and he says. How'd you find out? And the manager guy goes, Baskin Robbins always finds out. <laughs> and then when he gets home later, Luis says the same thing. They fired me. They found out. And Luis just goes, Baskin Robbins always finds out, man. <laughs> so good. Yeah. But uh, so like his monologue that he's doing, you find out that it's the book that he wrote. And like, yeah, what would you do as a Scott Lang? Like you're trying to turn over a new leaf. You're not a hero in the Captain America sense. No. no. Um, or, you know, an Iron Man or whatever. Right. So, He's just trying to make the best that he can. And he's like, well, I guess inspiring people is the best thing that I can do now. Sure. Scott also became, based on what we saw in Miss Marvel, Scott also became, I think, the guy who told the world what happened. Right. Right. Because he was doing a podcast in the Miss Marvel show called Big Me, Little Me. Mm -hmm. And now he's got a book out that's about his life. I think he became the one guy who was there who was just like, no, I'm going to tell everybody. This makes me so cool. <laughs> Like with the big Thanos and the time right. travel, he's the one who told everybody the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, and because it, the question's always been, how does the world at large know what Thanos did? How does the world at large even know who Thanos is? Enough to where when we were in New Asgard, they had a they had an ice cream place called Infinity Cones. <laughs> that, you're like, right. So like it is something the world at large understands and is aware of, but who told them that? Cap's gone. Tony's gone. The rest of them have lives. Scott's the only one that just went back to like just being a normal guy after this was all well, said I mean, and done. It, his his life became, yeah, like you said, telling the story. Right. And so yeah, I think he became the guy who told. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I can I can I can totally Which get also makes the book make sense too, right? Because he had the little podcast and the one show and now he's wrote a book about it. So yeah. It's so fucking so funny. <laughs> uh, so then He's at, he's at <clears throat> basically a, he gets a call and it's, oh, you're, he's like, why is jail calling me while yeah. he's finishing reading a book to children? Right, right. And yeah. uh, he has to go get his daughter out of jail. And he's like, why are you in jail? And she's like, oh, you know, there's some bad because, stuff happening. I was going to say, because she's a superhero. She's, she's freedom and fighting. She, and she stands up for the little guy. Right. <laughs> so she's freedom fighting. And. The cops are asking her, they're like, or one of them is like, what'd you do with it? And she's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. What'd you lose? Oh, yeah. When and she hands over the she, car. She's trolling him hard. And then, yeah. <laughs> she's like, she's like car oh, that she shrank. I did find this. And hands him like this, you know, it's almost a Hot Wheels size car. Yes, at that it point. is. So, yeah, it's a and Hot it's, Wheels police car. And it's it's his patrol car. Yeah. <laughs> and just the, the dumbfounded look on his face and like her little smirk and yeah. just walk. It's so funny. This is the third girl to play Cassie Lang. Oh my God, it is, isn't it? Yeah, so we had the little girl mm -hmm. from the first two movies. She was in the first two movies. That little girl, great, by the way. That was She's She fantastic. was one of my favorite parts. I wish she would have grown up faster so that we could have just kept her playing Don't the character forever. Don't you wish forever. that on her? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, no, because she has that one moment where he comes over for her birthday and he gives her the ugly little 
the ugly little bunny and she just goes, he's so ugly. I love him. <laughs> like, I was just like, you're the best. You're the most adorable little girl ever. Uh, and then the second movie where they're crawling around and they're like self-made ant farm where they're the ants. They made this big giant yep, yep. playhouse ant structure. farm. <laughs> so yes, uh, we had her. And then when we did Endgame, Scott goes home mm -hmm. and finds Cassie. And that was a different girl. And now a different girl. So this is the third. And I, I, I wonder if that's because she was she takes on such more of a lead role at this point and they wanted someone they were a little more confident could continue doing that for years to come. Right. Because she's, you know, she's a young Avenger. She ain't going she's, anywhere. She's a mainstay now. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's now new, a new main character. I mean, all the children characters that we've introduced are the next generation of Avengers. They're the main characters going forward, right? right. We have all these little old older characters kind of passing the torches along and maybe they'll be there to help. Yeah. But, they might, they might be a mentor. Right. But the young Avengers is the Avengers now, right? Like that's what we're going with and where we will get to. Um, so yeah, I wonder if they just cast someone that they were more confident could continue to, I mean, maybe in her role, inhabit the role, her role in Endgame was so minute. Oh, she's in one scene. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> they're like nobody's gonna remember that anyway if we have a brown-haired person here we're yeah. good but i like i like this girl that's playing cassie i think she does a good job of kind of uh bridging the gap right like from when she was a child to now she, this this girl i think feels a little more like the little girl we saw in the first right. two movies as a grown uh teenage girl um but yeah i just i i enjoy her a lot and we we head back to the house and i love that she's calling hank grandpa hank is not her grandpa no He's not like he's not related to Scott at all. <laughs> They're Hope's parents, right? <laughs> and as far as I know, Scott and Hope aren't married unless they did that off screen at some point and right. didn't show it to us. And I feel like they would never do that. <laughs> not with those two, no. But they, uh, uh, one of the things I liked about the early parts of this movie is they have fun with the shrinking technology oh my God. like the hank pizza. brings hank brings in the tiny pizza and like puts a little droplet of pin particles on it and it turns into a big pizza yeah it goes from a personal pizza to an extra large yeah exactly and he's like i saved eight dollars right like brilliant line <laughs> yeah. and you're just like oh my god that's hysterical yeah they they play around with the goofy goofiness of the shrinking and and in beginning tech um but turns out her and grandpa hank have been working on like a secret project Yep. And that secret project is, you know, all honesty, trying to map the quantum realm. Right. It's not their fault that it also has to ping into the quantum realm. I mean, that's the, just a side effect of the fact that it's a mapping software. I technology. was going to say they're making a radar, basically. Yeah, they're, they're trying to map the, the unknown regions. Um, Which they think are empty because somebody had lied to them about what was there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Hope, or not Hope, uh, Janet. Mm -hmm. Janet obviously is freaked out by this and uh, her little prologue with Kang, I think is interesting um, where, you know, they're friends or at least allies at first until she realizes what he is and who he is. And then she has to stop him. But Marvel does this a lot where we'll get to a plot point that is new and we just try to say, Oh yeah, it was always there. And it's like, but, why didn't she tell her family about Kang immediately? Like, why? Right. And that seems like something she would have told them. Well, the, the thing that they didn't really address there that I thought was odd is she could have been like, dude, I was so freaked out or so ashamed because it, it I think, uh, I think like a, a smidget of dialogue was given about it. Like, why didn't you tell us? Oh, bad. Yeah. Um, it, it should have been like this whole thing, like at that point in time when they, or pinging over there, she could have been like, look, man, shit was happening there that... Well, even but even before that, right, the idea of she knows Hank is interested in the quantum realm, mm -hmm. he's probably questioned her ad nauseum about her time there, yeah. right? So giving Hank all the information he needs to not make the kind of stupid decision that leads them all to get sucked into the quantum realm in the movie probably would have been a good idea. Yeah, but then we wouldn't have had the movie. <laughs> well, I understand. I'm just saying. They do this thing where they introduce, like, when they when we did Captain America Winter Soldier and we found out that Hydra had secretly infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D. the whole time. Like, the other movies didn't do anything to set that up. And we're just supposed to assume, oh, we're just all stupid and we missed all the clues. 
No, there were no clues because you didn't know that's where you were going until you right. got here. Right? Like, you got in the writer's room and they were like, what if? Right. <laughs> we did not say it. And I don't think it's a bad thing. Comics do it all the time, retcons and changes right. and stuff. But in movies, it's a little harder to swallow, I think. Well, the, the thing with comics is they have months and months right. and months. Yeah, like movies, we've got a couple hours to right. tell our story here. And it's like, dude, we didn't forget what happened last time. Right. Like that was a going to see that film was like this big highlight in our lives. So yes. yeah, we didn't miss that. Oh, much. I remember that we would take we had we had two whole rows of two whole rows of the movie theater with people we knew. Uh, right, <laughs> we used to go to those movies at midnight, dude. <laughs> well, I, that was so to sidestep a little bit while Tara and I, because uh, my, my lovely wife and I did this as like a movie date. Yeah. Um, so we go to the movie theater, and it's the first time I've been to a theater in years now. Sure, uh, and I was like, man. I hate ordering tickets online. Not a fan of it. Right. I, I miss the box office. Um, I miss the line for a midnight showing. Yeah. And I was explaining that to her. I was like, I remember waiting in line to see Iron Man 1. I'm like, I waited in line. Right. We waited you, in line to get tickets. Tickets went on sale. You had to go to the box office. Right. <laughs> I'm like, you didn't pull your phone out and you're like, I'll reserve seats two and three here. Yeah, we didn't have assigned seats back then. No, and I missed that too. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't like the assigned seats. I'm like, I want I like the assigned seats. It, some people do. It's not for me. I like being able to just look at a theater and go, I want to sit right here. <laughs> that, I thought that was half and know of fun. That that's where I'm going to sit when I get there. Because I can go to a theater back in the day and think, I know where I want to sit. But nine times out of ten, by the there time were, you got there, there was already people there. Was there was one or two people there where right. you wanted to sit. And if someone's in my seats now, I can walk up and be like, you're in my seat, bro. Get out of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> That's my seat. I paid for it. <laughs> but there was uh, the the things that happened in the line waiting to get into the movie oh, yeah. was, was fucking magical. Around. Dude. I mean, I remember standing around outside that mall oh, just talking God. about every movie and dissecting every moment of it for the next 20 minutes. Right. We would stand there for 20 minutes, half hour easy, just talking about the film. Right. Well, and, uh, like episode one, I waited in line for hours. X-Men, uh, the first X-Men movie. I yeah. waited in line for fucking hours, and yeah. it's because you it, tickets didn't go on sale till what fucking one o'clock or something like that, nine o'clock. It depends on the theater and the yeah. Time. We didn't have tickets going on sale f a month ahead of the movie's right. release. Yeah, so <laughs> you'd wait in line, and like now, <coughs> the midnight showings will have they'll start happening at nine o'clock or something like that. It won't even be. It's midnight. not even that late. It's like four or five in the afternoon. Right. It's not yeah. a midnight showing anymore. No. So I'm like, man, there was something that was beautiful about the movie going experience then. Sure. That doesn't exist now. It's cool. To well, do you know why they don't do the midnight stuff anymore, though? Why? It's because of all those people that got shot up at that Batman screening by that crazy oh, guy dressed yeah. like the Joker. Fucking asshole. He went to a midnight screening. He's got Joker paint on. He's Joker. He's going to see The Dark Knight Rises. And then he killed everybody. <laughs> he killed a lot of people. Yeah, I don't know. everybody. Way but. to fuck things up for a lot of well, people. Well, that's Frick. why they don't do midnight chillings anymore. <laughs> they were so much fun, though. <laughs> it was the... It, it was a beautiful and sacred thing. Yeah, no, it was good. And I, I really enjoyed it. So, like, not having that anymore, it's just a different vibe. And, like, going with that group of friends was always so much fun. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, I miss that. I miss it, too. So, and it, after after doing a few years of uh, movies in the living room kind of thing, yeah, I'm like, fuck, dude, I miss the theater. I miss no, it yeah, so we, much. We, we go back to the theaters. We, you know, we'll definitely go see Marvel movies when they come out. And yeah. We, yeah, I guess that's probably it. That's probably the only time we've gone to a theater. Most everything else we just stream. Well, the 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 last few Marvel movies have been so refreshing, and I've enjoyed them so much. Oh yeah, I have too. I mean, so has so has Corey. It it, re it reminds me of why I fell in love with uh, Marvel movies. Like, it you you went and saw these movies, and like it was the first time you got to see that superhero on screen or whatever. Oh, of course, it was yeah. totally bitching. Yeah. Well, now. We're getting introduced to new characters, new concepts, and stuff like that. And I'm like, after you know, 13, 14 years, however long they've been doing this now, they're they're still keeping things. 2008. Right. They're keeping things fresh and fun still, yeah. and it's fucking amazing. I agree with you. the The larger audience does not agree, though. A lot of people have not liked Ant Man and Thor, Love and Thunder, and uh, Black Panther did fine. It's Black Panther. That movie did fine. <laughs> Because right. it wasn't a big multiverse movie. It was just a Black Panther movie. <laughs> well, uh, what, what was the other one? Um, Shang-Chi. Fucking badass movie. Uh, yeah, Shang-Chi was good. But that one actually did good, right? That was that was probably one of the last ones to have pretty positive 
reviews, reviews out coming there. out of it, right? Because Eternals didn't get positive reviews. No, and Eternals was a cool fucking flick. I thought Eternals was fine, but it's a niche, man. It's, uh, you know, the Jack Kirby, Stan Lee stuff, that's a weird niche uh, where it takes a specific kind of fan to even be into that, going into it. But I could see where a casual audience member might get turned off by the weirdness of that. I mean, it's it's a very gods and men kind of story. Those are the same people, though, that went and saw Guardians of the Galaxy and were like, this is fucking cool. Yes, but that's because Guardians of the Galaxy was just Space Avengers. Sure, sure. I mean, every character in the Guardians correlates to an Avenger, right? Tony and Rocket, they're both smart-ass drunk guys. Uh, <laughs> Star-Lord is the man out of time, like Captain America. Right. Uh, Groot is a big giant He's hulking Hulk. monster. Yes. <laughs> Gamora is Black Widow. What about uh, Drax? Drax is Thor. They're okay. both they're yeah. both kind of big, strong, dumb guys. Yeah. Yeah. Little Drax dry. is Thor. A little dry. Yeah. That's the one dimensional character. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah, Drax is Thor. So yeah, it's just Space Avengers. Eternals is not Space Avengers. No, Eternals not at all. is very different than Space Avengers. It is. <laughs> but it was like being a, a movie or being somebody that was consuming the movie i was like oh this is fucking perfectly enjoyable no yeah i think it's i think it's great and i, I you know but i'm a fan of the weird old right. sci-fi part of the marvel universe but i think that's where some of the casual moviegoers are getting turned off okay. and i think ant-man is, is another perfect example of that the idea of kang as a character and what he represents and the, the little post credit scene with all of his different variants like He's a strange thing for the casual audience to latch onto. He's not Thanos. We understood Thanos. We we got it. We understood his motivation. Kang's a little bit more of a gray area. Uh, he's a time traveler, first of all, and I think time travel kind of turns people off sometimes. If it's done well, like Endgame, it's fine. And they're using the same concept right. for this time travel, right? I mean, it's in the same world. Time is a circle, they go with the idea that all of time is happening all at once, which means changing the past can't change the future because the past and the future happen simultaneously. Right. Time is written. It is a circle, right? Like, so it, it all happens all at once. While we are sitting here talking, George Washington is chopping down a cherry tree. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, <laughs> they are signing the founding documents. Exactly. To, yeah. As we are having a conversation <laughs> here about that. Um, so I think uh, that concept can be a little jarring for an audience yeah, yeah for an audience who just came off of the infinity saga which was very action straightforward bad guys sure. good guys we're gonna fight uh this is this dabbles into some weird areas we've Our, been getting more and more cerebral with them yeah i mean yeah. dr strange and the multiverse of madness was oh, not yeah. very well received i liked it, it i thought good, it was great good fucking movie dude uh, i enjoyed it but i understand why when people said well, I, I watched Doctor Strange. I don't even understand what's going on. Why is Scarlet Witch a villain? Who are those little children? Where did they come from? I'm like, oh, you didn't watch WandaVision, huh? They're like, what? No. I had to watch a TV show before I could watch this movie? Yeah. <laughs> and Continuity's getting a little too big. There's there's a lot going on. Yeah, there, at for this sure. point where like you have to do some homework. You, you better have a Disney Plus subscription or you're not going to yeah, get it. Yeah, you have yeah. to do some homework before you... Now, I will say... As far as the last two films have gone, uh, this Ant-Man and Black Panther Wakanda Forever were just sequels to their movies. Right. Uh, Scott recaps all the major events at the beginning during mm -hmm. his little I'm reading my book monologue. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then the rest of the movie is focused on the through line of Ant-Man to Ant-Man and the Wasp to Quantumania. Yes. Uh, so I think... That's been something that's refreshing is I didn't have, all I had to watch was the other Ant-Man films to watch this. All right. I had to watch was the first Black Panther <laughs> film to watch Wakanda Forever. But uh, this is the one, uh, it's weird to me that Ant-Man gets to be the film that sets up the stakes for the future. <laughs> that's a weird concept to me. <laughs> well, it, I mean, as we sit now, because he wasn't an, uh, an original Avenger, um, he was in the comics. He was right, not right. In no, the, no, no, in not, not, not yeah, in our MCU no, no, is what no, I'm yeah. talking about. Uh, so is he is he one of the guys then that carries the torch moving forward? Because we don't we don't necessarily know well, what sure. all is going to happen with Thor yet. No, Thor is going to be around. Hemsworth, whether they bring back Taika Waititi or not, 
because a lot of the fans who were upset about that movie blamed it on Taika Waititi. Sure. So whether they bring back Taika Waititi or not. Hemsworth is Thor, period. Hemsworth has said, I'll keep doing this as long as they keep wanting me to do it because mm-hmm. I enjoy it. So I'd imagine we have not seen the last of Thor. Uh, but Hawkeye, maybe, right? I mean, His he, show kind of implied a passing the torch kind of thing. Right, but with him, with the actual actor losing a leg or whatever... Oh yeah, Renner after yeah. the accident. Yeah, um, that, uh, that's that's a lot. I mean, you could write that into Clint's character. Oh, though, easily, right? And because that's something they 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 kind of played up a little bit in that Hawkeye series is he can't hear as good anymore. Yep. Clint's Clint's body starts to fail him when he gets old. He he's eventually he's blind. Yeah, the, like oh, so. Blind Hawkeye is so fucking. Oh, cool blind too. Hawkeye is amazing. He just uses his hearing to yep. to to target things. Uh, so you could definitely write into his character the problems that Renner has experienced in his sure. life. And it would just be like, oh yeah, like Hawkeye's body starts failing him as he gets old, you know? But do you, do you think we're going to be getting to a point now to where, cause like Loki, uh, Loki's not going nowhere. No, that's He's what I'm saying. Popular. L- Loki is one of those characters that like, he might be a, a fucking spearhead moving forward in the MCU. I don't know about that. I think he's definitely going to be important to this whole Kang story. Oh, I mean, they they showed that with the yeah, second post credit scene. Well, we see that from the with the first season of the show. Right. I mean, the first season of the show is where we get introduced to the concept of Kang in He Who Remains. Right. Which I have my own theories about. I think yes. that He Who Remains and Kang might be actually the same person, but we'll get into that a little later as we talk more about Kang. Um, but I want to talk about a thing that just... I mean, I lost my mind. I was like a little kid when I heard Bill Murray. Bill Murray's in the movie, by the way. Oh, my God. For a split second, he's nobody. He's a random character from the comics that's from the the microverse or the whatever they call it. I don't remember what they called it in the comics. It wasn't called the quantum realm. Yep. Uh, But he betrays them. Yeah, immediately. Yeah, to Kang. But when I heard him say to Janet, uh, it's too late. He's already sent him. Yeah. And she's like, sent who? And he just goes, the mechanical organism designed only for killing. Like, I was like, oh, my God, that's Modoc. <laughs> like, I was a little kid. I mean, my friend Dan can attest. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm smacking him like, he's talking about Modoc. It's going to be Modoc. <laughs> <laughs> because I love Modoc. He's such a weird goofy thing. Very odd. That I never, ever thought we'd see in a live action film. No. Never. Ever, no. never, ever. Um, He's a giant head in, with tiny arms and legs that sits in a floaty repulsor yeah. lift chair yeah. with guns in it and weapons and buzz saws. He has the buzz saws like he does in the comics. It was so cool. He's ridiculous. What is it? So, <laughs> yes, Bill, Bill Murray uh, shows up. Yes. The dialogue that he has with Janet is... Oh, him and Janet Obscene. were banging. Yeah, they were totally oh, they were bumping uglies. And 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 Hank even talks about how he he had a little thing. Yeah, he's like, I well, went, Janet I went was couple. locked away in the quantum realm for forty years he's or like, however long it was. I went on a couple of dates. Yeah. It didn't last. And she's like, how come it wasn't you, baby? Yeah, <laughs> like, no, it's it's a good moment it, to show their their real love for each other, right? right that, that kept them going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he just he just shows up, does his Bill Murray thing, and then betrays them to Kay. The whole thing was a Bill Murray thing. The betrayal was so Bill Murray. I was like, Jesus. Just his entrance, just parking his ship, like, right on the balcony of the restaurant. Like a dick. Yeah. (laughs) Funny as shit. Great. It was great. Well, uh, him him and Jeff Goldblum making their appearances in the MCU. Just both brilliant. Why not? Right. So over the top. It's like, this is great. Just why not? Right. This is what we're going to do. We're just, I'm an old guy. I'm an actor. I'm just going to have some fun with this. When they, they want him to like, <laughs> it's clear that when they're when they're approaching these like older actors and stuff, just be that, you, bud. They're, they're like, dude, you're playing yourself. Just yeah, just go do out you. there. This is your name. Full blown arrogant and have fun with this. Yeah, I mean Jeff Goldblum. I feel like any notes he gets on my Taika Waititi is just just be a, be all the Jeff Goldblum you can be. <laughs> be the best Jeff Goldblum you can be. <laughs> you you think you can Jeff Goldblum this a little harder? We need a little more Goldblum on that one, Jeff. <laughs> So but yes, Bill, Bill Murray shows up. We find out that yeah, him and him and Janet are freedom fighters together. They, they were, were they were banging it out, and uh, they were they get betrayed. 
Uh, also, the fact that Bill Murray calls Hank Henry oh my just God. shows how close he was to Janet because that's how Janet calls that. Janet doesn't call him Hank. Mm-hmm. She calls him Henry. That's her name for him, right? Oh. Everyone else calls him Hank and except this is, Janet. This is Hope. And you're just like, oh. Yeah. Henry. Oh, it's so good to meet you. I was like, that is creepy. <laughs> so like. off kilter. Yes. <laughs> And you know, <laughs> the look on Hank's face the whole time while this is happening, he's like, what the well, fuck? Well, it's, I think, I think it says two things because Michael Douglas is great. He's a great actor. Brilliant actor. I think the look on his face says two things. It's, I understand, but also I want to punch you. Right. <laughs> like, I understand that my wife was here for 40 years right. and I can't expect her to have ever thought she was going to get out. Right. So she moved on. I get that. I accept that, but also I want to punch your arrogant, smug right. face. <laughs> you need a good old-fashioned southern ass whooping right now. Uh, but then we cut back to Modoc. Yes. We, we cut back to Ant-Man and the, the little crazy quantum people that he's found, including the guy that really wants some holes. Yes, the, the rebel encampment. Yeah, the guy that really wants some holes was cracking me up. So, How many holes do you have? Seven. <laughs> and oh, then, and I love it. Counts. Scott counts them. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that's correct. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so Tara immediately fell in love with the Holes character. Do you know who that is that who, voiced him? Who? So it's Dave Dasmalchin, the guy who in the first two movies was the Russian dude on their crew. No <laughs> The shit. one who kept talking about Baba Yaga in the second movie. Oh, it's Baba Yaga. <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> my God. That's so funny. He plays the voice of the guy who just really wants all the holes. So he's like, you drank me. Yeah. And you get like, oh my God. Drink whole- the goo. Drink the goo. So so the goo is this, uh, it's, I guess, it's part, universal of, part of translator him. juice. Yes, it's part of him that makes you able to understand everything and speak yeah, to everybody. It's just universal translator juice. I wonder though, once you pee it out, do you have to drink more? To keep yeah, getting there's, there's, everything translated? There's no way it's infinite because Janet had to drink some right, you at gotta, the bar. You got to pee it out. Right? Eventually, you got to pee. Right. <laughs> but you don't have it anymore. Yeah, or does it linger in your system for a little bit? Like caffeine has a half-life? Maybe. So would it start to break down over the course of like a week or something? I don't know. Right, all of a sudden, you're just having a conversation and the, the other person just starts speaking a different language? Half, like, of, half of the words I need that some they more say goop. Are, yeah. Where's the goop guy? <laughs> Bust your tentacle thing, yeah. <laughs> Need some more goop. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> so yeah, they're doing their whole thing with this uh, with this Star Wars rebellion. I mean, because that's that's pretty they, much that's a were, Star Wars movie. It, it was yeah. um, aliens and all. Yep. So they're doing their thing with the rebellion. They're not aliens. They're quantum people. Yes. <laughs> They don't come from a different planet. They come from. They a live different... right underneath us in the quantum realm. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the biodiversity there amongst sentient beings was so baffling to me. It is. And and I was like, come on. But it's because in the comics, there was just a whole universe. The microverse, man. It was just a whole universe of people. So, Modoc shows up. And his fucking waylay that he does, I was just like, God damn. And when we see him, his face is big. His head is giant. His arms and legs are very tiny. It's beautiful. So... I, I was complaining before we started recording. I was complaining about the CG there. It was. I was like, eh, I feel like they could have done better with it. Um, and is it is it the worst thing in the world? No, man. We've definitely seen worse CG. Yeah. In a superhero movie in, in, the last, in the last few years. When Pip the Troll showed up at the end, I was like, God, what is that thing? <laughs> but fucking Did you put super- this together in a day? Superman's mustache. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, we've seen some crappy special effects and huge budget movies but i liked it i I liked modoc i was like man this could have been better it could have been better um well i I, saw i saw a screenshot about uh a week or two ago okay and i was like there's no way that's fucking modoc in the movie sure as shit it was modoc in the movie yep mental organism designed only for killing dude oh i think in the movie they go with the mechanical organism mechanical it was yeah designed only for killing uh and I think Scott says it first. He's like, Modoc? He says Darren. Or Darren, yeah. Or, or no, no, well, no. when he tells no. him his name, he says, Wouldn't that be Modofk? Yes. Because everyone always leaves off the four. Yeah. Right? It's Modoc. 
Um, but no, that that was my favorite part. I mean, again, if I'm a little kid hearing him say mechanical organism designed only for killing, it got all the more uh, better when he recognized him as Darren <laughs> Cross. Darren Cross, if you're not paying attention or haven't been watching, is Yellow Jacket from the first Ant Man movie, yep. the villain who shrank uncontrollably there at the end. Uh, when he just realizes it's him, he goes, Darren? And his response is, Darren? There is no Darren. Only Modoc. I was just like, that's how Modoc talks. Like, I was a little kid. You have no idea. When he has to communicate with him later on in the movie, yeah. he's like, Darren, hey, Darren, hey, Darren. Modoc. And he's like, yes, yeah, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> There's no Darren. Only Modoc. <laughs> but talking to the third person, again, that just makes me, I've read Modoc. Modoc is is a joke, kind of in the film. He has some serious moments, but he's mostly played for laughs. Yeah, Modoc is not played for laughs in the comics. No, uh, I mean, okay, occasionally, sure, but he's a he's a much more vicious, serious threat. To, I mean, he's a Captain America villain. Yes, you can't be a Captain America villain if you're a joke. You know no. what I mean? Like, he's a serious villain. He's weird, but he's serious. Uh, but I'm fine with the the fact that they played it for laughs because again they 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 juxtapose that I think with some very good moments out of Modoc, um, just as this machine, this floaty head machine man who who's got all these weapons and is just killing everyone. He's the he's the muscle, I guess. Right. Although Kang, Kang does not Kang need doesn't it. need muscle because he's obviously a badass, but. Uh, he's the thing that scares people in the quantum realm, I guess. Well, so what we what we did learn is that uh, Kang is not like on omnipotent, um, in in a sense that he's not uh, godlike in that regard. He has to be in a place at a time doing something um, with his physical body. So it would sure. it would make sense that you would make an enforcer, sure, and it would be this Modoc character, right? The the thing that I think they didn't like. Uh, it's clear by the end when he's when his suit gets all busted up, but one of the things that uh, a friend of mine was saying was, "Does does Kang have superpowers?" And I was just like, "No, Kang has superior technology <laughs> that makes him seem godlike." Right. So like just the thing of holding out his hand and 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 being able to like telekinetically lift and move things—that's tech. That's not powers. Right. That's just technology. Um, but when you take his tech away, he's still one of the most skilled, you know, learned combatants, combatants yes. in any in, reality. In the universe. Right, or, in any multiverse. Right. Yeah. So uh no, I think it was I think it was very interesting. I think they, they could have made more clear that everything that he was doing had to do with the tech. It's not until the tech's broken that you realize, oh, that was just that was his tech. Well, I, I felt like uh initially as we're being introduced to the character, or as far as like his interactions with Janet goes. Yeah. I felt like that's where they were alluding to us that he was nothing without the tech because she said, once I got, uh, once he got his suit back, it changed his abilities. Basically he sure. went from a pretty average fucking fella to a well, super I, badass. I, I took that as more that little monologue. I took that as more, uh, her implying that who he is changed because he's presented himself to her as this victim who's been banished to the quantum realm and can get out with his tech and can get her out with his tech. She becomes hope for him. Right. But he, and then the moment he has his suit back, his personality shifts into the conqueror again. Well, he, he, he needed her to do something like, right. and this is, this is where I, I felt like that character had a lot of, a lot of depth. Because yeah. he was clearly extremely manipulative. Oh, absolutely. And damn good at it. Yeah. Like, you meet this... He's a time traveler. You meet this lady who's very fucking smart, very capable, and you play her like a fiddle. Yeah. Like, oh, we're going to do this together. Come yeah. on, let's get back to work. I want to get you to your daughter. We can do this. Mm -hmm. Fuck, dude, what a prick. Well, and and, <laughs> and, I, and I, but I don't think it's entirely his fault. I think Janet needed the hope that he brought. No, she, of course she, she wants to go home. She's been here for 30 I mean, years or whatever. Yeah. At that point, probably only about 20 or so they did de-age her a little bit for that flashback scene to imply that it's somewhere in between when she was lost and when she got home. Not that there was much to de-age that lady. 
They do DH her a couple of times through that movie uh, in a flashback when she says goodbye to Hope. They've DH'd her quite a bit. And they did DH her in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Well, it's like putting some color uh, in her the hair. The sequel, the second Ant-Man movie. It's like putting a little bit of color in her hair. Like, she, the lady doesn't really have wrinkles or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, she still does. She's still got those I'm an old lady skin things going on. It, it's, it's funny. I was telling Tara, I was like, so for the longest time, she was a daughter to Harrison Ford in movies. I'm like, and then when What Lies Beneath <laughs> came out, she played a spouse to him. Yeah. And and she's like, ooh. And I was like, but she was she was old enough to do it then, and Harrison Ford was fucking Harrison Ford. Well, right. He's the man. So, you know, he, what he does is ageless. Well, yeah, he himself is not ageless. No. He's actually one of those actors that we watched get old really fast, go from, like, the guy we all remembered to the guy he is now right. in a very small amount of time. Right. <laughs> well, when when you're talking a fifty year career, sure, um, is it is it that fucking fast? I mean, I guess Star Wars wasn't quite fifty years ago, forty years ago, uh, but you know, it was nineteen seventies. Yeah, seventy eight, seventy seven, seventy seven. Okay, um, so when you're, I mean, yeah, damn near a fifty year career, man, like forty five years. That's that's a long fucking time. No, sure. And, I, I'm not. I'm not saying it's not. The and thing he that's was 35 years old then. The thing that's funny to me though is like the Captain America, the new Captain America movie that's coming out, New World Order. That's mm-hmm. going to be Sam as Captain America uh, is going to have Harrison Ford in it. He's taking over the role of General Ross or Secretary of Defense Ross, whatever he was. By the last time we saw him in Civil War. Uh, or no, actually, we saw him in Infinity War. Yeah, yeah I think he was the Infinity Secretary War. of Defense. Um, because uh, that guy died, William Hurt. Mm-hmm. He passed away. But when I heard that, I was just like, yeah, but you guys realize like Harrison Ford's pretty pretty up there, too. He might not be around much longer. And I hate to say anything like that, right? right. Put put some kind of bad juju out into the world. But like, we it might just not felt, be getting a it decade felt with strange. Yeah, it felt a strange uh, choice to me. And then I thought... Oh wait, they're probably gonna make him fucking Red Hulk, oh, and yeah. then you don't need Harrison Ford anymore. You could just he's just well, Red Hulk. I thought we were gonna get Red Hulk way sooner. Well, the fact that they kept bringing Thunderbolt Ross yes. back yes. implied that maybe we would, and maybe that's why they kept bringing him back. But then the actor who played him passed away. So well, now that we're about to get Hulk rights back, or I think they just it's, got it's already, him back. Yeah, yeah, it's already back. They have um, rights back. It's that's gonna be huge. Yeah, I think. I think. <laughs> The, the couple of moves they've made in that regard, bringing that guy back probably to do Red Hulk and bringing in Hulk's son, mm-hmm. Scar, oh, that's gonna at be the so end of She-Hulk, cool, and dude. just She-Hulk, bringing in She-Hulk. I think we're building to World War Hulk, mm-hmm. uh, which is obviously not going to be the same story it was in the comics. I think it'll probably be more of a some bad dudes got the Hulk's blood and they're making Hulks. Right. And... We need our good Hulks, i.e. Hulk, Scar, She-Hulk, and Red Hulk to go save the day. Well, and, Maybe and, even Abomination. Get it, him I, in there, too. I was going to say A-Bomb is for sure going to be yeah, a part get, of Yeah, get Abomination in there. Actually, no, I think Abomination is going to be on the Thunderbolts team, so that's that would be a different, okay. different but, side of him. Uh, I, I think even with Red Hulk, like, they, dude, they could do an entire movie just getting Ross on the side of the Hulks. And it would be interesting well, yeah, and you fun could do, to watch. You could do a Hulk movie where Ross is the bad guy. Right. That's what I'm saying, right? man. Like, like where he, his transformation turns him crazy. Right. Like Hulk was early on, mm-hmm. right? Where he was just a monster. I, I, and then it takes all these smart Hulks over here to go stop him. There's so there's just so much potential there to do yeah, a no, kick-ass no. Hulk movie. I agree. Uh, a couple of them. And I want to see fact. a Mark Ruffalo led solo Hulk film. I think that could be really cool. I, I mean, he hasn't this, had the opportunity to do that. I, at this point, we need it. I mean, shit, we saw the Avengers over a decade ago for the first time, and that was Mark Ruffalo's first appearance as the Hulk. He was actually supposed to be an Incredible Hulk. He was the one they wanted. But they got Norton? But scheduling conflict, he couldn't do it, and they hired Norton. <laughs> so Norton was actually their second choice for the role. Okay, and then Norton did screen testing for the Avengers, and they were like, man, you're just unbearable. Yeah, no, they, they, they recast him. Yeah. yeah. They weren't happy. Also, I think Louis Leterrier, the guy who directed Incredible Hulk, he wasn't happy with him either because apparently... Uh, he's just kind of a, a hard guy to work with. Like, he's very critical. Sure. He's very, he likes to think he knows better than the director. 
I mean, he's a he's a great actor. He is. There um, is no doubt. I, I'm sure being in the game as but long that as, might breed arrogance. No, of right? course. Like, like being, I know better than you. Being in the game as long as he has, I'm sure it's led to a bit of that. Yeah. And uh, Norton's done some of the best. I mean, best he's, fucking, he's won awards. You know, right, he's an um, Academy Award winning actor. He's a, he's a badass. Yeah. No doubt about it. Um, yeah, I was I was honestly I was a little off put when Ruffalo became the Hulk. Oh, I loved it. Because love I, I love, I fucking loved uh, the Hulk movie that we got with Ed Norton. It was a fun it was fucking okay. flick. It was a good, that was, it was okay. Okay. Best solo Hulk movie we've had by a long shot. Uh, the 2004 thing sucked. I, don't, I agree. The 2004 thing did suck. I think you're forgetting the trial of the incredible Hulk with Lou Ferrigno, the greatest Hulk movie ever made. <laughs> I, I think of that as part of the series, honestly. No, the trial that had Incredible Hulk was a made-for-TV movie. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> it is part of the series, but it was a movie. It was a feature-length made-for-TV fair enough, movie. Fair enough. <laughs> it but also had Thor in it. I Oh, my God. Or no, not Thor. It was Daredevil. Daredevil yeah. was the one who was in that one. Thor was in the other one. Yes, Thor was in the other one. <laughs> Daredevil was in that one because it was a, a courtroom thing. They were suing the Incredible Hulk for property damage or some, <laughs> some such nonsense. And Matt Murdock was the one who defended it. I mean, it's oh, funny as shit. Brilliant. They were trying to start their own little cinematic universe in the Hulk show. Yeah, in the 70s. Right. They had, they had Daredevil. We had Thor. Spider-Man, I think, made an appearance way back when. I don't remember Spider-Man. Uh, no, no, no. The, I'm thinking the, uh, I think it was a Japanese film that did the Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, America. yeah. Yeah. Um, in any case. Anywho. Back we're, to, we're, back we're to falling, and the Wasp. We're falling Fox, way off topic. Yeah. Uh, so, <coughs> Modoc shows up, kicks everybody's ass, yeah. real good. Um, yada yada yada. Scott, Scott Yang's <laughs> Scott Lang is captured, uh, and his daughter. He agrees then because uh, Kang is basically saying, "Look, dude, I'll kill your daughter in front of you, and I will make you watch it over and over and over." Oh again yeah, I'll make you relive that until moment. You beg for death. Yeah, and, and and that calls to mind Loki, right? When they put him in that quantum uh, moment that he had to relive over and over again, where Sif punches him. <laughs> that was great, but yeah, Kang is a he's a fucking he's a psychopath. Prick, yeah, like he is a psychopath, ruthless. Yeah, he's not Thanos. So <laughs> Scott's like, fuck it, I'll help you. Fine, whatever. Don't hurt her. Uh, as as a parent watching this movie, there were all these like parental moments in it that were yeah. super sweet. And Tara bald uh, talking about the movie afterwards. She's sure. like, this stuff was happening. And like as a parent, She's like, you know, you, you want your kid to go out there and be strong and all this, that, and the other. She's like, but there's also that part of you that wants to protect them and uh, wants to, you know, when Ant-Man Keep catches her when she's falling and right. pulls, pulls her into his chest and is, you know, and protecting his baby. Giant guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's like that. She's like, yeah, you want to, you want to protect your kid, pull him into your bosom. She's like, but you also want to make them strong and ready for the world. Yeah, you want them to make their own mistakes and make their own decisions. Right. And yeah. she's like, so when he's like, you better not have a suit. She's like, I get it, but, you know, I'd be like, if if you have a suit, you better use it now. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes to whatever this power core was. Uh, it's the time core. So the, yes. the, the, the chair, the, the big little floaty chair. Big little. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, is how Kang travels the multiverse. Yes. And it's, it's how he does it in the comics as well. It looks better. The chair... And the uh, the interface around it look better in the movie. In the comics, it's literally just a chair. Yep, <laughs> it's just floating around on a little chair. Very Professor X esque, yeah. if you will. <laughs> so the fact that they made it look more like a craft than just a floaty Kinda, chair. Yeah, it's like this big ball thing. But it was a uh, it was fucking cool, and it was still that's not something you should be able to rule the multiverse from. You know what I mean? This ball thing. Sure, it's it's the time travel though, man. No, it's, I, I it's, get it. It's it was just I thought it was well done. It was still tasteful, even though it wasn't exactly comic yeah, accurate. Yeah. Well done. Um, so Scott, but the go- engine itself has some kind of paradox or paradoxical bubble mm-hmm. around it, mm-hmm. where everything is and isn't. Yes, it's is the, the Schrodinger's cat ideology. Yes, right. It, uh, <laughs> what did, what did they call it? The uh, possibility storm. Yeah. Um. 
So where every decision that you could possibly make starts showing up creates these altered versions of you. Yes. Yeah. So and Scott is very unsure of himself. Right. <laughs> and a bajillion Scott yeah. show up. I, it's probably thousands, if not millions, at that point in time. Oh, it's huge. It's a whole bunch of them. And yeah. it it turns into a wave, and basically, as this wave progresses, um, and Scott is being consumed by it. Uh, the idea of helping his baby comes he hears to her mind. Voice. Yes, yeah. and he's like, "I have to help her." Well, then all of a sudden, all the Scots are on board, and everybody's like, "Holy shit!" That's the only thing they can all agree on. Yeah, right. How like, is this? How is this happening? Scott is very unsure of himself, but, but what he one thing is loves constant: his baby. He wants to protect Cassie, Absolutely. and they all feel the same way. So yeah. that was brilliant. It, oh, that. so cool! So they. They the become ants. Original Lane, yes, gets pushed to where he needs to be by yeah. in, in a mountain of Scots. They all stack themselves like yes. ants. <laughs> so he's doing what he needs to do. The wasp shows up and with her bajillion. Uh, yeah, but hers don't split. Hope is much more singular minded oh, of than course. Scott, right? She knows what she has to do and she knows what she wants out of a situation. Right, but you still see all the little uh yeah, they all kind of just catch up with kind her. of coming off of her and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, she has an army following her more or less. And she shows up, helps Scott. They do what they need to do to shrink this thing down because Janet blew it up as she described yeah. it. And they get it. She and then embiggened it. <laughs> <laughs> I just like saying embiggened. It's a Miss Marvel thing. And they, uh, they have the have this little sphere, and then Kang is there, and the whole gang is there now. Yeah. And Kang is like, oh, are you going to fucking hand it to me, or am I going to take it? And they're like, Scott's like, oh, what do I do? He's like, you know, give me Cassie. Right. Just keep up your end of the bargain. That you can never, have this fucking thing. That was never going to happen. Right. That was never going to happen. And Kang is like, all right, boop telekinetics it to himself or uses telekinesis to bring it to himself technology it's yes. technology it's not telekinesis it's technology whatever it is it's, i'm just saying because that was a question that came up that was a question that i i fielded from a couple of people like what does they make king have superpowers like no he's, he's got technology he's, he's got been to the tech. future That's he's fair. got the best technology that is that looks like magic to those of us that live in this timeline fair enough fair <laughs> right? that seems like oh he's magical no he's not so he gets his little remember all for you Harry Potter fans. His remember all. <laughs> it yeah. does it is tied to his memories. I know. He has to like link his his consciousness into the chair. Well, uh what was the what was the phrasing that they used? It was a uh, neuro neurokinetic technology or something yeah. like that is how they Again, described it. From the far future. Right, very cool. Seems like magic. It's not. Um <laughs> gets it, grabs Janet and is like fuck you guys. If they'll they'll be in the same position that I was in, leaves. Right. So we have uh, Scott, Michael Douglas. What was uh, fuck Hank and Cassie yeah. basically mm -hmm. that are kind of left to figure shit out. Right. And it was uh, they're in the desert, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, if that's what you could call it, it, uh, it in it's the a, quantum realm, right? It's a weird patch of yeah. land. I don't, that I don't fully understand how to describe yeah, it. it's it's the quantum realm it, does, it doesn't fit the same standards that we, our we hold our reality to um but yeah ultimately they they all you know formulate their little plan mm -hmm. hank's gonna go off and do something mysterious and scott's gonna distract kang and try to stop him from leaving or whatever it was uh which built, built to actually what I thought was a pretty good third act kind of final battle with Scott coming in, big giant man, destroying everything, and uh, Cassie and Modoc fighting because Modoc's trying to kill Cassie. I was a little frustrated with that fight. With the Cassie and Modoc fight? Yes. Why? So Cassie was doing this like coming, coming of age story, coming to understand her powers thing yeah. throughout the course of this movie. And... Modoc is fully realized at this point in time. Super badass. We literally watched him. His first scene, we watched him cut one of these like building flying creatures down like it was nothing. Yeah. Um, if you tell me for a second he couldn't do that to Cassie, who is like unrealized in her power set at this point in time. I guess I understand what you're saying, but I think that's kind of the point, right? Because we're trying to we're trying to give Darren. A redemption right because and he's just a dick so what i what i said to tara because she 
she takes a gamble. Okay, Cassie does. And she's like, oh, let's see what happens. And she turns herself into a giant girl. Right. And it, it would be very new to her. I'm like, what would have been great and I think hysterical is if she would have fallen on him or fell on him and crushed him. Sure. Uh, like getting her feet about her. She doesn't fully know what she's doing yet, but she's still the hero there. She took a risk and it paid off huge. Yeah, but the first time Scott did it, he... He was a super... He also was... Yeah. Pre- because, because once you're giant... Everything that you th- everything that you perceive changes, right. right? Like he's stomping on cars like they're nothing. He's swatting the war machine away like a fly. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he wasn't perfect. She wasn't perfect either. No. But it gives you a very large advantage, no pun intended. No, I it mean, gives you a pretty you're, big advantage. You're super powered at yeah. that point to you're not, the nth though. degree. You're just giant. Yeah, that's super powered compared to and Normal everything sizing. about, so, like, the thickness of your skin is also giant. Right. So, like, that gunshot is just going to ping, bounce right off of you. No big deal. Right. That little saw is not going to cut through you at all. Whatever. No big deal. Right? Like, it just changes everything to big. Extra. <laughs> super size. Right. Like, it was everything. Everything gets stronger. <laughs> so, they they have this fight, and it's, it's, it's cute and it's sweet. It's more of a chase than a fight. Right. Um, He's yeah, just kind of chasing her. She's running away because she doesn't know what to do. She finally kicks his ass. Yeah, she does the giant thing. Um, and he's like, you know, down for the count. They give him this redemption arc. And the the phrasing that she uses, she's like, just don't be a dick. Right. And he's like, what? And she's like, yeah, don't just, be a just dick. Just don't be a dick, Darren. And he's like, oh. She met Darren when she was a little child. <laughs> he came into her room. And he tried to kill her. Right. <laughs> so they give, they give him his redemption arc. Meanwhile... We have the rebellion basically trying to push back Kang's forces. And, yeah, they came in with Scott and Giant Man, like trying to destroy kick an the, ass and the taking time, names. The yeah. Time machine. Well, it, at one point, and this was this is where I knew I was like totally sucked into the movie. Had uh, he grabs Kang and is like smashing him against the wall, and I was like, oh man, I just hope you fucking decimate him right now. <laughs> Like, because that's where you're at at this point. You're like, this motherfucker right here, he was, oh, man, this prick. Yeah. I hope you get him so dead. And Nope. No, not, not yet. Not that easy. Not yet. Uh, he's got too much tech, man. He's, he's, I mean, he's, he's got all the best tech. He's, he is the storyline moving forward. This is yeah. our new Thanos. So they have their, their little showdown. Uh, they're being pushed back by Kang's forces. Yeah, it seems like they're going to lose. And it, then, it definitely set that up. Fucking that layup. Hank. Him comes in with his genius ants or whatever they are. Oh my god! Yes, that have progressed technology thousands of years. Yeah, in the like they created the whole society of the quantum realm. Oh my <laughs> god! So, I, I I said early in this, I was like, his Hank was kind of like this odd character in it. Like he had moments where I was like, meh, and then he had these like great moments. Him showing up with the ants, I'm like, this is the coolest fucking thing. Yeah, I mean, it, but it's but it's Star Wars, right? It's it's right. it's Lando showing up with everybody at the end of Rise of Skywalker right. to save the day. It's the Ewoks <laughs> beating up on the stormtroopers. Yeah, it's, 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 it's everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they show up. They the ants overrun Kang. Yeah, yeah, that's when all of his tech gets broken. Mm-hmm. That's also when Modok comes back in, wasn't yes, it? Yes, yes, Modok just comes, comes in, in and Kang says Modok, and yeah. he says. My name is Darren, and I am not a dick. <laughs> so, Modok throws himself onto this bubble that these ants are attacking that Kang is protecting himself with. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to break it. And pops it. Yeah. And then the ants fucking totally overrun Kang. Yeah, and Darren gets messed up, and, and he's going to die. Yeah. Big old giant head, Modok Darren, is going to die. Well, I, his, his, <laughs> his tiny hand. On Scott's yeah. face was so, the weirdest looking so thing. I was like, did they use a real hand? It's just like a little hand on a stick. To he's see touch he's your telling face. Scott, he's like, you've always been like a brother to me. <laughs> and Scott's like. No, he hasn't. He's like, all, all right. They met in the first movie right. and have not seen each other since. But that that's why it's so funny because this fucking completely. He's such dis- a goober. This disconnected individual. He's such a goober. Is dying and he's trying to have this moment of glory and whatnot. And this it, this sweet thing, and he's not a dick anymore. And <laughs> he puts his little tiny hand on Scott's <laughs> face. Was just like, oh my god, it's so weird. And Scott's just his like, little teeny tiny hand. Uh huh. Yeah. Like he's trying not to be a prick to this guy now. Right. He's, he saved the day. Yeah. Kinda. So he's like, all right, maybe a little. All right. Um, 
cool. Darren dies. No, remember before he dies, one of the last things he says. What's the last thing he said? One of the last things he says is, at least before I died, I got to be an Avenger. And Scott just oh, goes, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, sure. You, you were totally right. <laughs> Modoc was a self-proclaimed. He wanted to have his big moment, he right? Was a like, self-proclaimed I'm Avenger. a hero now. <laughs> you are right. I'm an Avenger today. That had totally uh, eluded me here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But then, honestly, I think the the little epilogue to the to the battle where everybody gets to go home mm-hmm. except for Scott, and they just get into a straight up brawl. Scott's helmet is broken, so yeah. he can't shrink or grow. Uh, Kang's tech is broken, so he can't use his powers, and it's just a ass whooping it's a brawl yeah. like it's just a straight up fist fight boxing brawl and i thought that was actually a really cool way to do it because it shows it, i think it, it gives me the same feeling of watching thanos beat up the hulk right with, without using an infinity stone to do it it's you think i've come this far with just tech with just pop my power no i am skilled in everything I could have to be skilled in. I am the in. fucking conqueror. Exactly, right? Like, So you think I've come this far with my tech? No, I am good at this. And I'm going to show you right now by beating the shit out of you. And that's what that's what you feel watching oh, Thanos yeah. beat up Hulk. You're just like, whoa, you don't even need Infinity Stones. You just bodied the Hulk. Right. Like, <laughs> what? We've never seen the Hulk lose a fight. He doesn't lose fights. You just bodied him? Well, exactly, right? Great. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, it's, it elicits those same feelings when it you, does. when you first watch him come up and go into the box. And again, I want to see Creed three because I just want to see more of that guy just beating the shit out of dudes. Like, he's, just, he's all ripped and stuff. Like, I just want to see him yeah. beat the crap out of some dudes. Wh- whoops, Ant Man's ass. I don't think Creed's gonna lose the fight. I mean, I haven't seen the movie yet. Uh, but I don't think Creed loses the fight. He's the star of the movie. Rocky right. only lost in the first movie. He didn't lose in the other movies, right. you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> and we're at Creed 3 at this point. I think he's got to win. We're, we're, I mean, we're definitely well down the Rocky road right now. Jeez. Nice pun. I know, right? <laughs> um, so, but, yeah. Yeah, it builds. It, it's it's, it it's builds a great this, fight. It builds to this epic brawl. It's a great fight. And then fucking yet again. Hope shows up. Well, yeah. And it's got that line from the trailer that I always watch in the trailers went, I really like that line. It's a good line where he says to Ant-Man, did you really think you could win? And Ant-Man says, I don't have to win. We just both have to lose. And I was just like, that's Scott though, right? Ultimate Scott's sacrifice. willing to sacrifice yep. himself to get that victory that, that's to what, keep his daughter safe. That's what it is to be a hero. And right. like that's that's the thing that it's like that willingness to sacrifice is what makes that so fucking cool. Agreed. And yeah, he was willing to do it right there in that yeah, moment. Don't have, I don't have to win. We just both have to yep. lose. I just can't let you win, baby. Right, that's brilliant. That's, that's, I'm <laughs> so not trying to win. I'm getting goosebumps. Right. That's not about the point it. of it. I'm not trying to win the fight. We just we need to lose both of us, and yeah. So hope shows up. Yeah, gives yeah. Him, gives him a little bit of a, a backup, and they start. Yeah, Kang definitely would have made it through that portal if she hadn't oh. shown up. Oh yeah, but she was apparently always there anyway, and that was the thing that really made me laugh in that moment. I was like, was she just floating, flying there, watching Scott get his ass beat? No, no, no. So she was on the other side of the portal. No, she did right, but when she shows up, it's. She grows. She was on this side of the portal mm-hmm. before we see her grow. Oh, okay. So I, I was like, how saying. long was she on this side of the portal? Was she just sitting there watching Scott get the shit kicked out of him and just saying, I'm only going to show up if he comes through this portal. You had this one <laughs> Otherwise, coming, Scott's Scott. got this. <laughs> he's fucking giant, man. No, he's not. No, he I has know. no tech at that point. I know. Point. I know. <laughs> he'll be fine. Yeah, he'll, he'll be fine. So she saves the day. Yeah. They fucking push this prick into his his remember all. That I think was a bad idea. I really do think that was a bad idea. I feel like they've just merged him with his own time technology. <laughs> yeah, so, something happened there. And then uh, Scott goes back to the real world. And it's him walking just yeah, like the beginning the of the beginning. movie. The guy was the greatest, though, where he just like loses it all of a sudden and goes, oh, my God, did I just make everything yeah. so much worse? Yeah. <laughs> 
and you see this look of panic for a second, and then you're like, <clears throat> ah, it's probably going to be all right. Yeah. So fun. I am curious, and I've seen a couple of people on the internet talking about this. I am curious if Scott is even in the same reality, though, when they come back. Mm. Because there was, uh, and, and maybe it's just movie making and how it works, and we were filming on the day, and these are the extras we had. But he passes three of the same people. Yeah. In the end scene yes. that he passes that he passed in the beginning scene. And I, I don't know why I picked up on that, but I did. I remember watching that final scene and going, why does that couple look familiar? And then I saw a video on the internet talking about it. I was like, it was the same couple. Mm -hmm. And this guy was theorizing that Scott may not actually be in the 616 in the reality, reality anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, so that was, that'd be interesting. When I was watching that, that was something that I was concerned with when he was having his moment of panic. Right. Because I'm like, is he in the right spot in the right time? Right. Uh, that being said, he goes into the coffee shop and earlier in the movie, and I should have mentioned this earlier, the old man working the coffee shop. Oh yeah. Calls is like, Spider -Man. thanks Spider-Man. It doesn't charge him it's for his on coffee. The house. Second time he goes into the coffee shop. He's like, that's going to be 12 bucks. Ant-Man. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Uh, another, I, I want to bring up one more thing. I mean, we get, you know, we get to the end here. Um, that was another thing uh, that really just blew my mind. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Something blew your mind. You wanted to get into it. I did. Oh, Kang. Yes. When he's when he's talking to Ant Man when he's got him locked up in the prison mm -hmm. and Ant Man trying to be the big head, you know, I'm a cool guy says, "Yeah, I was an Avenger," and Kang responds with, "An Avenger? Did I kill you? Have I killed you before? Yeah. Are you the one with the hammer?" and the thing that I think is really brilliant about how they set that up is that seems like just a throwaway joke because they even have Scott go, oh, yeah, people confuse us sometimes. That's Thor, you know, we just similar body types. Mm -hmm. So they make a joke of it. And then later when he's kind of like got him down and he's been using his little telekinesis to mess with him, he says, you're out of your league, Ant-Man. So he knows who he is. The, the the idea of, have I killed you before? You're the one with the hammer is to say, you're not Thor. You're not memorable. You're not Captain America, right? right? You're Ant-Man. Do you know how many versions of you have died beneath my feet? The people that hold their own against me are Captain America and Thor. But ultimately, they lose too. You're nothing. Like, I loved that he didn't, he wasn't confused about who Ant Man was. He was just messing it, with him. It was it was a it was a mental game. Yeah, he was yeah. just messing with him. Oh, I love that. That was brilliant. I uh, wanted to bring that up before we were no, done. No, no, no. That 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 was actually a really <laughs> good scene to bring up. Uh so then we get a a, a post credit scene. The Council oh. of Kangs, man. How many people, this is the thing, when when people first saw Thanos at the end of Avengers, yeah. how many people in the theater went, What the hell is that? None. Who's, who's that guy? <laughs> I don't think there was. No, I, there were. There were. There were people that, were, that only went to watch movies. They didn't know who Thanos oh, was. Fuck. Those of us that are comic fans were like, holy shit, that's Thanos. Right. But everyone else was like, who's this purple guy with the weird chin? Yeah, with the funny lips and stuff. Right. Where did he come from? Who is this guy? And I think that's the same thing with the Council of Kings. Like, what the hell? Why are, they all, why are they all gathered together? Why are there so many of him? You know? Right. Like, it's a weird concept. <sighs> I love it. I love it. it. No, I, I loved it. it. Um, all the Kings were so cool. I wish we were doing it like we were in the comics. In the movies, he's got variants and stuff like everyone else. In the right. comics, he's a singular individual. He has no variants. Mm -hmm. Kang is unique in that way. The reason there's so many of him is because he's a time traveler. He keeps making time travel duplicates of himself when he keeps jumping around to different points in the right. timeline. <laughs> so at one point, he got all of those time travel duplicates together because he was like we got to get on the same page here guys there's too many of us we're all trying to do different things i've got shit to handle here <laughs> right get on board and truth be told it was just a ruse to get them all together in one place so we could kill them all right but and maybe that's what the council of kangs is in this as well maybe kang is the one who f assembled the council of kangs without them without their knowledge right maybe he's already among them maybe I mean, he's immortus or ramatut right there, there were well and there were Kangs that looked just like him well, in yeah, the crowd there. So, Kangs yeah. everywhere, yeah. It's a whole it stadium could, of Kangs. It could be anything. <laughs> um, but then we get the Loki post credit scene. 
Yeah, this is the first time since uh, the. F- Actually, that's wild. It was the first Ant Man movie. The first Ant Man movie's post credit scene. I don't know if you remember that. The first Ant Man movie's post credit scene was just a straight up scene from Captain America: Civil War, where Falcon and Sam walk in, and Bucky. They've got Bucky like mm-hmm. lashed up, so he can't talk to him. And Cap says, "Do you know me?" And he says, "Your mom's name was Sarah." Yeah. You used to wear newspapers in your shoes. So you're taller. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that was just a scene from the movie, and that's what the post credit scene is here as well. It's just a scene from season two of Loki mm-hmm. because there's no context for it. Although Victor Timely is another persona of Kang. I don't know if you knew that. That's a weird, obscure one. No, I did Victor not Victor Timely, that. He's he goes back to like uh, the the early 1900s, mm-hmm. and he's an inventor. Only makes sense now. Yeah, like that's, that's awesome. Victor Timely. That's another variant of Kang that's or incredible. another time travel duplicate of Kang. But uh, yeah, I have no idea what the hell's going on in that scene. <laughs> I'm excited, but I, I have no idea what the hell's I going on. I just love it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I've, so it's been, it's literally been years now since I've been like really stoked for the Marvel Universe uh, like I once was. Sure. But basically after Endgame happened, I was like, I would watch the movies, but it wasn't wasn't anything that I was like, all right, this is fucking badass. Dude, that totally put the wind back in my sails with these Marvel movies because yeah. the, the first Ant-Man movie was such a breath of fresh air, and I remember watching it and being like, man, this is so great right now. It With how superhero movies are, this was a good a good thing to throw in there. Right. And yet again, fucking third iteration of Ant-Man here, third third film in the, the franchise, and I'm just like, this is fucking fucking great man and yeah. it totally put the wind back in my sails with these movies yeah i had a lot of fun it. with it man i really enjoyed it uh, i i don't know how people have hated it so much i'm telling you man i just think that the the movie going audience the non-comic initiated they're not on board with the weirdness anymore like at first the weirdness like i said it was it was palatable mm-hmm. because it was they, they used the same formula for all the weirdness no matter what they were doing yeah. They use the same formula. It's here's your big blockbuster action movie. You're going to get your fight. You're going to get your big special effects, whatever. Uh, and now we're delving into territory that is so specifically comic book. Right. That I think it's turning off some people. And continuity has gotten big enough at this point, too, where, oh, it's huge. like you said, you have to know what's been going on in order to get what is going on. And that can be frustrating for the casual movie-going audience. If you're if you're new to the MCU right now, and the, the, this is where this is just so well, weird. I don't know how you could be new. It's, just, it's, it's, it's ingrained it's in culture. It's been an impact on our cultural zeitgeist yes. since 2008. So right. I don't know how you can be new. But, uh, well, let's say, let's say you're... A, 10 year old kid right, maybe, maybe you're a child maybe yeah. you've seen a couple of the movies like there's a lot of fucking backlog that you have to get through kid and and not all of it is super, super relevant right. right we we definitely have talked about i think we talked about it on the show mm-hmm. back when we were doing it just without video uh there's you know the 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 amount of stuff that you have to watch is much smaller than the amount of stuff that's been made, right? There right. is a through line from the first Iron Man movie to end game that you can get through in like 10 films, right? You don't have to watch all 22 of them that right. led up to that, right? Because there are, there are moments that are important to the overall narrative and there are moments that are fun and add a little bit of flavor yeah, to the little, overall narrative. A little narrative. bit of a side quest, if yeah. you will. Yeah. But I think, I think we've talked about it on the show. I think we talked about like, all of the movies that involve Infinity Stones are obviously very important. Right. Any movie that had a cameo from Thanos in it is obviously very important. The, the through line of Captain America films is pretty important because Civil War puts them in a weaker place so that Infinity War, they can be devastated, right? right? So I think it's not necessary to watch everything, but with the fact that they've opened the door now with television shows... There's it's getting so a little much. extreme. It's very saturated. Yeah, it's getting a little extreme. And that's not to say that I haven't enjoyed the television shows. I've enjoyed every single one of them for for different reasons. Right, they're way fun. But, again, I had a friend, you know, go see Doctor Strange that had never watched right. any, never watched WandaVision, and they didn't understand. They were just like, I don't get it. What's what Did I miss a movie? When did the they do are... a second Doctor Strange movie that I didn't get to see? That 
that totally stuck it in my head again. Where, when, when are we getting Daredevil back? That's supposed to be soon, I think. Uh, no, twenty twenty four is Born Again. They're actually okay. they actually Next started year. filming it this week. Okay. Yeah. In okay. wherever they're filming it, probably oh. New York, I would imagine. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, but, that's going to be cool. Yeah, D'Onofrio's on site. Uh, uh, Charlie Cox is on site. We don't know whether or not the other cast members will be returning. I will be very angry if we don't get, at the very least, Eldon Henson back to play Foggy Nelson. I'm right. going to be very angry because no, he's great. He is wonderful. As Foggy Nelson, and I, I need him to come back and play Foggy. <laughs> Yeah. So. Everyone, you can recast Karen Page. I'm fine with that. Not that that actress wasn't fine and didn't do a good job, but... It's Karen. Karen's not essential to the story. Right. You can recast Electra. She had such a small part in the overall oh, very, narrative. Very minute, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think, I, again, you brought back Charlie Cox, you brought back D'Onofrio because they're the kind of heart and soul of the show. But you, you got to have Foggy, man. You got to have that guy. That well, I mean, Henson did such a good job with Foggy. I, I think Marvel's always done a good job at if they can get the, the right people back. They do it. Yeah, we haven't heard anything about that. We have, he's not been seen on set or anything like that. Well, so. fucking Natalie Portman was never going to do another Marvel movie. And, oh, guess what? She's, well, she no, shows up think, in his Thor. See, this is the thing. I don't think Eldon Henson would say no. Right. I don't think they've asked him. <laughs> and why? Why haven't you asked him, right? Maybe, or maybe it's later in the show. I don't know. Maybe. It would be cool to reach out to him. He'd be like, who the fuck are you? And we'd be like, Eldon Henson? Yeah. I don't think Eldon Henson's got any time for us. <laughs> he, he should. Maybe one day when we're more powerful than... than, than we have time for you, Eldon. Then we'll reach out to Eldon Henson <laughs> and see if he wants to come talk about Daredevil. I love, I love that you called it powerful. When we are more powerful... Well, you know, that's that's kind of how YouTube works, right? You, you start out, you're not super powerful, but then eventually you are. I mean, shit, I've watched channels go from, I'm just doing a goofy video about a video game, to... Video game publishers are sending me advanced copies of right. games to review. You know, like, so one day when we're more powerful, maybe. Maybe we'll be able to have the pull to get Eldon Henson to come hang out on the show and talk to us. I love it. I love it. So. We'll have lots of money. We'll fly him out. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll hang out with him all week. I'm like, dude, you come out here. We'll take you out to dinner once. Right, once. we got great barbecue around here, bro. You like barbecue? <laughs> Everybody likes barbecue. Come on. <laughs> where they take meat and they cook it on a grill it's for us <laughs> i would say it's for you but it's not it's for us um so okay th this week uh i was talking to jason about this i wanted to announce the first book club book yes uh i think we're gonna do v for vendetta first oh that's a that's a big one it is a big one it's very wordy it, it's quite wordy, but it's got a lot of uh, TLDR going on. It's fucking, <laughs> it's too Alan, long to read. It's Alan Moore, man. Um, I, I've, I've, you've, you've, my feelings on Alan Moore on this show, I think, are clear. I yeah. think he's overrated. I, I love him. I'm not saying he's not a, an him. auteur and and didn't doesn't deserve his place in the history books, but uh, I think he's overrated. So that's going to be the first one that we do, and. The, of his books, though, I do think that is the best one. It's it's fucking strong. Because I'm not a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen person, and I'm not I mean, really Kill, a Watchmen person. Killing Joke was great, though. I mean, Killing Joke is not his creation, though. That's fair. That's right? fair. Of the things he's created. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, V for Vendetta is going to be first. Uh, I will make an announcement very soon on how to get your copy of it, and we will allow you to place orders on entertainthegeeky.com. How this works is we will be fulfilling all orders through a local comic shop. I've already spoken to the guys at Altered State Comics, and they are going to be the ones fulfilling that order for us. So really cool. We get to support a, a local guy. Yeah. Um, your, your local stores are important. If you don't get it through us and you still want to participate in the book club, great. If you do get it through us, it helps us. It helps a local store here in St. Yep. Louis. So appreciate it all around. Um, but if you got a copy, now's the time to pull it off the shelf, dust it off, and reread it. Bust that shit out. <laughs> uh, what, I, I think that'll be, uh, we'll start that one in April. So um, we'll open up orders in the next like week or two here Sounds and uh, give a couple of weeks for fulfillment and everything. We'll start that one probably mid-April. And then we'll do the review at the end of April going into March. Now, are we going to handle this like live stream style? We'll do it as a live stream. Comments so, and people to, to actually have a discussion about it? Oh, yeah. And if nobody yeah, shows yeah. up, it's just going to be I us do. doing what we do. Easy. Uh, so we'll do that on, on a Sunday. Um, we'll plan on 11 o'clock for that stream. Okay. We'll, we'll make further announcements about it yeah, yeah, as, yeah. as we have everything a little more solidified. But, yeah, it's finally happening. 
ETG Book Club. Woo! Get on board. <laughs> and, uh, go to entertainthegeeky.com. You can follow us on all of our social media there, all that good stuff. Um, like, comment, subscribe, all that, please. Helps us immensely. Uh, getting the getting the name out there and getting to do this together is a lot of fun. So yeah, help us. Honestly, we want to hear what you think about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Leave us a comment. Yeah. Leave us a like. It's super helpful. Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> so, thank you. And as always, stay geeky.